Hey, yeah, welcome to my shop. This is a double decker cedar bird house, number six of five. So just stick around and I'm going to show you how I made this thing. Seems like uh, some of the girls in my family want more bird house. So I got it all set up and you see it's, it's round so I got wedges behind it. I'm getting ready to cut it. That's a brand new two TPI blade. So let's do it to it. Shape, so let's do it. Okay, I never drag it back with it running. I always cut it off right there. Oh, it's got some pretty red in it. I'm going to anchor seal this other part and put it back. First thing I'm going to do is find the center on both ends. Use my centering ruler as usual. And I'm going to find the center based on the, on the heart of the uh, tree, I guess you say, the log. Not, not out here on the sapwood. So I will come in here and uh, this is... I'm going to use the inch side. I know what I'm talking about when I use the inch side. I got three and a quarter on that end, and I got three and a quarter on this end. So I'll come in here at the zero mark, right there. Come right here. I got three and a half, three and a quarter, back up three and three eighths, three and three eighths on both ends. So there's the center as I define it. Let's go do the same thing on the other end. Okay, <clears throat> for you first time viewers, anytime I put something between centers, I always, and I mean always, drill a one inch hole in one end of it and use my drive center. Because what that does for you, that guarantees it's not going to come out. If you put it, uh, you know, if you just sit it here like this, the only thing you've got hoping for going sideways is, is that little point and those little blades there. So, you know, if you was to get a bad catch and fly it out, this is cedar, it's not that heavy, but it would still hurt. And I use a steel hammer. I love mushrooms, so I like making them. Don't, do not need any words of wisdom for this. But I thank you anyway. So I'm going to come over here on the lathe and we will put it on the lathe. So, anyway, you don't use the forest a bit for doing that. You have to use the drive center. Hope I didn't screw up my forest a bit. It worked. Starting to bounce in the back. 900. I'll probably turn it somewhere around 8. Right. Okay, all I'm going to do now is just get it to round nice and smooth so I can uh, see what I got to work with.
Come here, I want to show you something. I'm good. I want to show you another way to cut this down. Uh, we've always used the beaver for roughing. I just want to show you another way. To, uh, if you want to, want to do it sometime, it, it's really effective. Okay? okay. Um, a lot of people use it. Use a square cutter and you come in here. Okay, don't stand from the camera. You come in here, uh, take about a quarter at a time. This is like all the way down? Yeah, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay. Cut my apron down. Look better. So there's a job too, so. It's a good way to do it. You don't have a beaver. Got a look. Come here. I'm taking about a, about a quarter of the cutter. This time, that way you're not, you're not hitting so much, okay? Got it? Yep. It's pretty effective. Touch moving works with gloves on. Never. All right. Okay, that's all I'm going to do for now. This is his, uh, his day. I let him have two days a week. He's over here and he's been, uh, he glued him up a bunch of plywood. And he's going to make him a bowl out of that. So, I guess that's what he wants to do. That's what he can do. When I get back on this again, I'll uh, fire up the video. Here's an interesting little tool I built that some of you guys might might find that you, you want to do one. It's a it's a double headed alignment tool. On this end is uh, for one and an eighth inch, and on this end is for one inch. So what you do, or what I do anyway, is I use it's called a step drill. I come in here, you make me a hole right in my center, that you know to sort of comes out like that so it matches this right here and you can see right there pretty easy to do really and there you are can't get much closer than that anyway i thought i just I, I use it a lot and i just thought i'd show it to you guys so let me let me get on with this now okay i got it on here and of course you know yourself, anytime you take, change ways or ends on mounting something, it ain't never going to be perfectly round again. So the first thing I've got to do is get this back in the round. It's really not that bad. A little bit more here, but I'm going to use the beaver to do side cuts. and We'll get this thing round here in a second. The rule. Okay, for some of you guys that aren't familiar with this tool, it's a homemade tool that I call a beaver. And if you look real close, you can see there's a the, the square cutter laps over here and over here, approximately the same. And what this allows you to do, it allows you to come in here and, and gauge the depth of your cut and do a drag cut like this, and it turns out really nice with no tool marks or nothing. Uh, and I also wanted you to notice that. When I do this, 
I come in here and it's, it's up against my belly. It can't be against my hips because this is a taller lace than normal. So it comes right into here and I, I do like this. And you see it? It's right against here and I'm bringing my body now. Get about here, I've got to take a reposition and come in here like this again. Anyway, that's, that's how I do it. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I am going to set my calibers at, here they are, I'm going to set them at three and a half inches, right there, and that should be just about where that red line is, and I'm going to come in here, 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 and here, and that's going to be my, my shape from there. So, uh, let me get to measuring thing we jigger here. Uh, the ends are no problem. So, this is a little less than 12 inches long. So, I'm going to come off the outer quarter. So, I'm going to come off to 5 inches, 7 eighths right here. That's my center mark. center mark and I'm going to come off on each side. Oh, I'm going to just do a swag on this. Okay. So I'm going to take the parting tool and bring all of these down to three and a half inches. Now that's providing my parting tool is sharp. And it's been a while since I used it. Can't tell if it's sharp when you got a glove on. Uh, it, I think it's pretty sharp. So let's see if we can't do that. Now, when, you, when I cut the center out, you do it a little different. Uh, you have to make you have to make a little bit of a cut, and then a cut next to it. It's called a relief cut, and that's so that when you get deep in here, you're not putting uh, too much side by side pressure and jamming up your parting tool. So we're going to start with that, and, uh, and then I'm going to make it as wide as this right here, and then what we're going to do is we're going to come to those right here like that. When I turn this up, I don't know, a lot of people, you know, they have it at speed, they turn it on and off. I don't like to do it that way. I use the rheostat uh, speed control, I guess, uh, every time, all the way down when I cut it off. That way, when I flip it on, I don't get any surprises. And this becomes muscle memory after a while. I don't even think about these other switches. So anyway, when you bring it up, bring it all the way up. And that's up, that's up to you, and it also depends on you know how you got your wood attached. Uh, this is really secure with a face plate and a, and a live center. So I bring it up till I can sort of feel it going right there, a little bit. Feel that? And back off just a hair, and that's a perfect spot. That's the way I do it. something here I'm just for just for grins I like doing things different just come right here make me a mark right here see that will make me a mark right here let's see how much difference here is there no, it's, it's the same I guess that's going to tell me immediately I don't even need them damn calibers don't like I like using them anyway I've had one hang on me one time it wasn't no fun
That seemed to work pretty good. All right. I'm going to come in here with a round cutter now. And I'm going to make my, uh, my hourglass shape. Make sure I'm on center. I use a round cutter quite a bit. And here like this, and as you get here, you come in here like that. Let's see if it works. Nice and 
Mm. That's plenty good. We be done on this one. <clears throat> Nothing to it, huh? All right, I get this off and put it on the other one. And make sure I got plenty to bite there. Well, rather than bore you to death, I went ahead with a couple of things. I went ahead and hollowed the second part out. It was, you know, identical procedures the first, so I didn't see no reason to, uh, you know, to film it really or video it. And then I, I, I cut some pieces of cedar. This is actually out of a picket fence board. Uh, and uh, this is epoxied in here, and that's epoxied on the bottom. And when these set up, which they're going to sit here all night, you know, I'm going to turn this down to something. I'm not sure what. And I put this little one on a glue block and uh, get it turned down to match those and then glue it to that one best I can to the top and put a hook in it and drill some holes and, you know, finish it all up and we'll be done. So I will see you in the morning, my friends. Yeah, it's the next morning. I have very little doubt this is going to be the ugliest birdhouse I ever built, so I'm getting ready to uh, do something to it. I may, I don't know exactly what I'm going to do, and clean up my wrist a little bit, make sure there's no gobbly gook on it, and uh, I'm going to use a square cutter, and I'm going to cut these down a little bit if they don't fly off on me. center. It looks good. And I'll tighten that down. <clears throat> okay, just as close as I possibly can. And let's whirl it up. You can see there, this one's pretty good. That one's really out. Oh well. Pretty good right there. Uh, it's uh, 730. I'm going to have a little faster than that. It's 837. I'm going to come in here on the side. use lately my my grandson was uh, made a plywood bowl and there's nothing harder on on cutters and plywood so I'm going to take a minute and go ahead and sharpen this and I'll be back
thought it was. That's okay. You lay down. And you got some people who say you don't need a perch, and some people say you do need a perch. Kind of not very deep. That's about, I guess that's good enough. So I don't know. So that was really deep. So I think I'm going to put a perch on one and not a perch on the other. I'm going to put a perch right here on this one. And mold me straight. Alright, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put some sealer on it. You guys have seen sealer lots and lots of times. And then I'm going to build a, like a roof for it right here. And maybe that'll be it. I don't know. We'll see. See how it looks. I don't think it looks too bad. It don't look too good either. Well, I get this off. And... Uh, I'm building the top for it. I've got this piece of wood over here. I thought, I thought it was more cedar, but it's not. It's some sort of hardwood. I have absolutely no idea what it is. It appears to be pretty dense. But anyway, I'm going to make a top out of out of this. It's going to be like an umbrella top you go over there. Then I'll epoxy it on. You know, maybe this ain't going to be so ugly after all. So let's get on with that. I had to go get my favorite hat. If I don't have a hat on and have it on backwards. That stuff goes down my collar. I don't like that. I like using my beaver for when you're roughing something, you got a lot of uneven you know, edges. You only get the point hitting it right here, and that it makes it a whole lot easier. You don't want to get a whole lot of bounce. Of course, if you saw when I had the round cutter, I started around there and it just wanted to bounce all over the place. Plus, this is a lot heavier, and heavy helps. Relocate the camera because you won't be able to see nothing but my back. Okay. Let's, uh, <clears throat> I got this on a glue block in case anybody's wondering. Uh, I failed to mention that earlier. Uh, I'll go ahead and start right here with my beaver and then I'll clean it up with a round tool. And that is some hard wood. So, 
I get her colored, I'll bring you back. Well, here's your finished product. To be perfectly honest, I didn't like it at all. I was getting ready to cut it in half and make two of them. And I showed it to my wife and she said, well, I like that. So I guess that's the way it goes. Hey, there it is, my friends. It's a double-decker cedar birdhouse. Now, you know, you may question uh, why the, the two globes, I guess, are, are sort of different. And I, I don't really have a good answer. Uh, yeah, I, I went ahead and this top was a light colored, so I went ahead and put some stain on it and I dropped a little bit on the other, so I just wiped the rest of it down with uh, its walnut stain. And the bottom one took it and the top one didn't. It may be because I had more sealer on the top. I'm not real sure. There was sealer on the bottom, but it wasn't that much. Anyway, guys, there it is. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, call your mama and all that kind of stuff and subscribe. Tell your friends. Come back and see me on the next one. I have no idea what it'll be, but it'll be something and not too awful long. Well, maybe a little longer because I'm, I'm, I'm heading for deer camp next week. I'll probably be after Thanksgiving before I do another one. So uh, I guess I'll just catch you on the rebound.